Hi, Dad. Welcome back to another episode of David and Andy's Honest About Life. How are you? I'm doing pretty well, Andy. How about yourself? I am well. I am well, thanks. It's a beautiful day. What's the weather like there today? It's been nice. It's, um, it was 75, I think, today, so not bad. I think we're calling for 80s the next couple of days. We're early in May, so that's kind of unusual. It's, it's a good thing. That is a good thing. All the snow piles are melted? Uh, yep, they're long gone. They're just a history now. They, um, it was pretty historic. That winter was, was up there with some of the heaviest snowfalls across the state uh, that we've seen in a long, long time. You know, um, it's fun to listen to you jump right back into your meteorological, <laughs> you know, uh, language and uh, and the way that you deliver the message. That's always fun. It's probably going to be a part of who you are forever. I think so. I think it's just uh, it's inbred in me. And I, you know, it was it was so um, I was so fortunate to be able to live that for so many years when it, it is my passion. I, I love weather. You do. You do. You know, you know, one of the questions I would have for you today is, you know, what were some of the biggest challenges that, well, maybe you can even name the biggest challenge in your life that you faced. Uh, but as you're thinking about that, um, you know, I think about, we talk about weather and it's been something that has been near and dear to your heart forever. Uh, you, in my opinion, like to, to, to sort of create your own challenges. And what I mean by that is you'd always buy yourself a rear wheel drive car. <laughs> you know, with a really big engine in the front to make it really heavy. <laughs> and these aren't quite the challenges I'm talking about. I'm sure there's much bigger, um, more um, sort of important challenges that you face and overcome. But I, in fact, you know, you think about that. What was it? A Camaro that that um, you and I were trying to get to a basketball game on a Saturday morning. And it just no <laughs> 12 inches. And I, I love the way you remember this stuff. That that, that was uh... That was a fun deal because it was a tournament and we had to get you there. I think you only had like six guys on the team. So, uh, you know, we had to get you there and, and yeah, my, my, it was an IROC. Uh, what do they call it? Um, the international race of champions. It was a, yeah. So it was an IROC. Yeah. IROC Z, it was a Z 28 or something. Z oh, sure, 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 sure. Z 28 IROC. And, yeah, and it had a clearance of about six inches off the ground, and we had 12 inches of snow that we were yeah. plowing through. Uh, it was pretty fun. I think that's where I learned how to drive. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, can we say this? Yeah, because I had to push, and you were driving. Oh, and you did a great job, except when you took off. And yeah. I, I, I planted my face in the snow behind you. Well, that was an awful lot of car, though. See, the, the problem with that car is it had a huge motor, a ton of horsepower. The wheels were were slicks, right? They were very wide. wide. Yeah. You know, very. You, you had worn the traction off of those tires. So <laughs> you just touch the gas pedal and the wheels are spinning, you know? Yeah, yeah oh. it was it was pretty fun. And I, I'm just, because I think, what grade were you in? You were in like sixth grade, maybe? Sixth fifth grade, grade, maybe? Maybe yeah. fifth? Fifth grade, yeah. probably. Yeah. Well, that's when we were living in White Bear there. Yeah. In the, in the townhouse in White Bear. I remember that. And, well. uh, what, a, what an experience that was. Yeah. And you, you really enjoyed the, the, the challenge, I think, of overcoming, you know, because you always had these cars that had very low profile, low clearance, you know, and you'd be traveling off to work and you had to be to work to give the weather, right? There was a set time you had to be there and you pushed the limits with these cars. Yeah. But I always got there. You know, you I always did get there. And that's, uh, I remember another big storm trying to get home and, you know, it took me two and a half, three hours to get home because all the roads, none of the roads have been plowed. And I remember I took an exit off the freeway and I shouldn't have because I got stuck and I, and nobody around to help because nobody was on the roads except for me. And uh, I eventually got it out and got, got home. And I remember just pulling halfway up into the driveway and the driveway was like, covered with two foot drifts. So I, I couldn't make it more than just halfway up the driveway. Yeah. I figured I'd yeah. deal with it the next day. You put those cars through their paces and yet you still got, you know, well over 200,000 miles out of them. I mean, it's really impressive. Yeah. Well, I've got a, I've got a Ford truck right now, F-150 that I love. It's got 316,000 miles on it. 316,000 miles on it. It's an eight it's still running. Yeah. It's an eight. It's a big eight. Yeah. Um, yeah. 5.3 or 5.4 liters or something like that. Are you going to roll it into the local G 
Chevy dealership at some point when it can't, when it no longer runs and say, give me one of these electric trucks. Are you going to do that? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to run it until the wheels fall off until they tell me I can't buy any more gas. I hope that never happens, but it sounds well, like it. I don't think it will in our lifetime, but the, the F one fifties are, are selling well, I guess those electric F one fifties. Yeah. They're huge. And yeah. that's, that's a Ford dealership. You said Chevy. I don't know if you meant that or not. Oh, I meant Ford. Good catch. Yeah. yeah. Our, the IROC was a Chevy, uh, but in most cars I've had have been Fords. And I, I was, yeah, no, I suppose. Mustangs. Everything. Yeah. Well, your dad, you know, that's funny because your, uh, your dad was a Ford guy, right? Totally. Totally a and, Ford guy. He would not. And, and it's funny because he'd call Ford, fix it or repair daily. I go, Dad, you love Fords. Why would you say that? Yeah. <laughs> and he goes, well, it's better than a Chevrolet, which is shove it or let it lay. So I, I go, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> what did we discover? What did we think the acronym Dodge st stood for? You and I were taking a trip up north, I think, to go kayaking or, or <laughs> yeah. camping. <laughs> yeah. We were always trying to think of, I don't remember what we it's, came up uh, with. I, I remember. It was, uh, it was dead or dying garage experiment. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's, that's what, that is great. That's what it was. I'm, I, it, I don't know. We were, our dying garage experiment. Right. It's funny how people sort of align themselves with certain auto manufacturers, like your dad being a Ford guy. You know, uh, you have you have been a Chevy person, a guy. Uh, you know, with your your Camaros, et cetera. Now you're into a Ford F one fifty. But it's uh, it's it's always fun to uh, you know learn about what types of, of, of vehicles, auto manufacturers, certain people align themselves with, and then try to imagine what else, what else they uh, align with, if you will, if that makes well, sense. Yeah, my, my dad's dad, my dad's dad was a chauffeur. And uh, this was before, the, I mean, he was a chauffeur and a horse and buggy. And he would get people around. So my dad's first thing that he wanted because he liked the idea of being a chauffeur and he was a chauffeur for the whole family. I mean, he'd love to drive. So he bought a Lincoln town car and it's Ford Lincoln Mercury that they're together. Basically Lincoln is kind of like a higher end Ford, but it was a town car and he loved that because it was his way of being, I mean, he could be a chauffeur in that car and it was a beautiful car to have. Um, so and that, that's what, He's stuck with Fords ever since that point. Isn't that something? Yeah. I remember before he passed away, I had uh, purchased a Ford Mustang. This is in the early 2000s, like 2007, one of the new models. And uh, went and picked him up uh, just to give him a ride around the neighborhood in that. And I think he really enjoyed that. I remember seeing his face. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. Sweet. Yeah. yeah he, he loved it when his kids and grandkids would uh, would take him for a ride. You know, when, yeah, when he so, was a little too old to drive himself and he drove for a long time, he drove yeah. until he was well into his 80s. Um, but yeah, well, I think it worried us all plenty that he was out driving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. It did. But he made it home all the time. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dad, as always. Uh, another uh, eight, 10 minutes well spent. <laughs> Thanks, and. Bill. Uh, this is just tremendous, Dad, that, uh, that, that, that we have this time to talk and that you share with me your memories. Uh, so thank you for that. Brings a joy to my heart as well, Andy. And uh, hearing you remember some of this stuff is amazing to me. And I, I just really, I appreciate that. You know, that's, yeah, that's something sure. that all families don't have. Is, uh, you know, those memories we should kind of, and as you said, bring those memories up. And I hope all the people listening to this will do that at home bring memories up and, and because it's a fun night. You can have a blast just remembering things. Agreed. Agreed. And, and uh, sometimes it'll surprise you what people remember about their childhood or, yeah. or, uh, or other. So again, thank you, dad. Love you very much. And we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Love you too, Andy. See you. Bye now.